Welcome one and all to the Cave of Ordeals. I'm Caleb Simpson from ZeldaDungeon.net and I'm going to take you through all 50 floors of this mini dungeon filled with tough baddies. This cave actually has two difficulty modes, the original which you are watching me play right now that has cutscenes, and then once you complete it, every time you enter from then on, it will be a slightly harder difficulty and I'll be pointing out the differences as I go to satisfy your curiosity. The first floor contains a single Bokoblin. Every time you come here after this, it will be a red Bokoblin instead, which has more health. Kill it to open the first door. Now the second floor has both keys and rats. Initially you can try killing them as soon as possible, but try to keep them in front of you so that you can defend if they look like they're about to strike you. This is particularly true for the rats, which can attack you pretty quickly, um, and they also, you can use your wolf form, but you spend a second or two thrashing them with your teeth, leaving you vulnerable, meaning that you can go, if you go that route, then you might get hurt. So if you do decide to use your wolf form, I recommend using Minda's charge attack instead. Also you should be collecting rupees as you go, because if you have the magic armor, you can use them as essentially health. The third floor has four Deku Babas. You can knock the three off the ceiling with the hero's bow, but your arrows are very precious and they're much more useful later on in the lower levels, so I recommend using the double claw shot to knock them down instead. When fighting a bunch of them, it's important to keep your distance. You want to use spin attacks to kill a few, and then finish off the remaining ones with regular sword slashes. Dekubaba serpents can also reconnect their stems to the roots that are on the floor, so if they run off, they can plant themselves again, and thus heal themselves, essentially. Remember, if you have the magic armor, the rupees are basically health, so you want to make it important to grab whatever rupees you can find so that you can last as long as possible in the Cave of Ordeals. There's also a diggable spot in some of these specific rooms that contain either rupees or hearts. In this particular one, there is a single one in the middle that has a single recovery heart. Both are valuable and I'll point them out as I go. The fourth floor has three Skotulas. These things die in a, with a single great spin, but if you don't have that last hidden skill, then the next best bet is to get past their defenses and slash away. Now you can do this with the claw shot by just smacking them, this will stun them temporarily and allow you to smack them uh, and get past their defenses, but alternatively you can also use the wolf form in particular and then just strafe back and forth to hop to the side and then attack them from either the side or behind and that way you can kill them as well. The fifth floor has Bulblin Archers, which can be a little bit difficult to get close to. Now if you do jump down, immediately begin using your shield so that you can get close. You want to wait for a gap in their attacks, and then defeat one, then continue working your way towards the other ones while defending. Now alternatively, you can kill them from up here, which is a little more safe. Uh, once they're defeated though, you can jump down and collect any arrows that you shot into the floor. They don't stick around very long, but they will disappear after a moment, so be sure to pick them up pretty quick. The sixth floor has fire slugs. You can walk underneath them to make them fall down, but that makes me a little bit nervous, so I like to knock them down first. You can just kill them with arrows, but our arrows are very precious and we need to conserve as many of them as possible for later on. So because of that, I recommend shooting them down with a claw shot. This will knock them to the floor, and you can simply run over to them and hit them again with either the claw shot or you can slash them with your sword. Either way, they're not very hard. <laughs> The seventh floor has fire keys and dodongos. An easy way to take them both out at once is to lure the bats to follow you, since it takes them a moment to attack you anyway. So you want to use a spin attack when you're standing behind the dodongo, this will hit its tail. This will damage all of them at once. In particular, if you have the great spin, this gives you a lot more range and it makes this a lot easier too. Also, this room has three buried hearts in this room, which is pretty awesome. So if you are hurt at all, now would be an excellent time to dig that up. <laughs> The eighth floor has tektites. They can be killed with stronger attacks like the spin attack or jump attack, uh, and this will kill them in a single hit. Now, it may be smart though to use your wolf form and charge up an area attack instead, because that way you probably won't get hit like I just did. Now, the ninth floor has Bulblin archers and some Lizalfos. Looking back at this though, a better strategy would have been to shoot the Lizalfos first using a bomb arrow. This causes the other one to run over in that lo to that location to try and see what's going on, immediately quickly shoot another bomb arrow at the same place to defeat the other one as well. After that, then jump down, turn around, and begin defending to deflect the arrows. This way you can work your way forward and avoid taking damage. <laughs> Now the 10th floor contains the first great fairy in this dungeon. You want to speak with her and she'll release fairies in the Ordon Spring. You'll need the spinner to, in order to continue, otherwise you can let her warp you out of the cave. So that's it for here guys, join me for the next video and I'll show you the next 10 floors of the Cave of Ordeals.